The Renault Arcana strays into a market segment for mid-sized coupe SUVs, previously only occupied by the premium brands. To compensate for the lack of a posh badge on the bonnet, you get plenty of pavement presence and a dose of Renault's latest hybrid technology, with both mild hybrid and full hybrid petrol power plants on offer. As for the inside, well here's where the efforts made to imbue recent smaller models with extra cabin quality have paid off, enabling Renault to push up market using the same interior technology. The result is a surprisingly polished proposition. SUVs and crossovers are where it's at, and every additional niche seems to be a development of the theme. Long, tall, and with a coupe-like roofline, the Renault Arcana is a high-riding but sleek contender that looks to offer big style without asking big bucks. The Arcana has a complex backstory. It's built in South Korea, it's sold as the SM3 in some markets, and it shares its name with an almost identical looking but unrelated Russian built model. Thankfully, its positioning is simpler a five door compact SUV with a swoopy roofline and one that claims to offer plentiful space, swept back style, and the choice of hybrid tech in two flavours, all for a bit less than a similarly sized regular compact to mid sized SUV. We'll find out whether it all adds up. Car manufacturers have been creating niches for almost as long as the automobile has existed. And of course, for every clever, enduring one, there's also a weird and wonderful trend that didn't last long. Uh, many thought BMW's rakish X6 fell into the latter category when we first saw it back in 2008. That model rather curiously merging the rugged looks of an SUV with a sporting coupe silhouette. Customers saw it differently, they ignored the dynamic compromises, the higher pricing and the compromised practicality because they just liked the concept with its supersized dose of pavement presence. So much so that the coupe SUV concept also caught on for smaller crossovers. BMW subsequently added more affordable X4 and X2 models, forcing Mercedes to join the party with its GLE and GLC coupes and Audi to enter the segment with various Q series sportbacks. You might have spotted a trend here, namely that the SUV coupe has largely been the preserve of premium brands, almost exclusively German ones. Five doors also seem to be a requirement. The three-door efforts like the Mini Paceman and the three-door version of the original Range Rover Evoque have floundered quickly in this class. But what of more relevant brands to this Renault? Well, so far in the compact crossover segment, not many have tried, although the distinctively styled fashion-led Toyota CHR is kind of coupe-like, as is the more recently launched Volkswagen Tiggo. The Arcana offers something similar, but slightly larger and a little more avant-garde. So is this French contender the car that customers in this segment didn't know they wanted? Should they want one? Car and Driving's review, the industry's most comprehensive, will find out. With such a potentially confused confection, hatch, SUV, coupe, you're always a bit unsure of the actual driving confection that'll be served up. Much of that will be dictated by the choice you make between the two petrol engines available, which are of the mild hybrid, or as in this case, the full hybrid kind. So, let's see. Get comfortable behind the wheel and the wider instrument screen that you're favored with in the more electrified model springs into life like a fairground display. Uh, press the start button and the rather gruff engine note fires up to the accompaniment of a green ready message and a twinkling chime. The Arcana is Renault's first purpose-built hybrid car uh, and we're just about to see what that means out on the road. 
The purpose-built caveat in that statement references the fact that all the technology in play with this 1.6-litre full hybrid e-tech model has been offered by the brand before, uh, first as a powertrain option on the smaller Clio Supermini, which doesn't sound very hopeful given that the Arcana has to use the same modest 142 HP engine to lug around 112 kilos more curb weight, about the same buck as a backseat full of kids. The alternative TCE 140 mild hybrid unit that you can choose in this car delivers the very similar output, 140 horsepower, as the badging suggests, uh, despite being smaller in size. The 1.3 litre engine is a familiar one from previous Renault models, but to give the Arcana its required all hybrid vibe, it's been embellished for the first time here with mild hybrid electrification. Here though we're going to concentrate on the full hybrid e-tech version because that's what the brand wants to talk about and that's what we've got here today. Uh, despite the badging of this top RS line variant, there are no Renault Spore genes here, uh, not in terms of handling dynamics anyway. Uh, there are plenty though in terms of F1 derived engine technology and we've heard this sort of thing before from manufacturers in motorsport but here it does happen to be true. Now a modern uh, hybrid F1 engine is extremely compact and uses two electric motors, one which recovers heat waste and the other which recycles kinetic energy from braking and they charge the battery and provide power boosts. These are mated to a multi-mode clutchless dog gearbox, an auto transmission so named because of the long dog ear shaped teeth which ring each of its cogs and which can tolerate rapid and violent shifts. This Arcana uses exactly the same tech but with a focus on efficiency rather than outright power. The engine is so compact that Renault has been able to package in two electric motors alongside it beneath the bonnet. One of these sits on top of the gearbox, it puts out 20 horsepower and acts as a high voltage generator and this is tasked with starting the car and smoothing its gear changes. Most of the work uh, in assisting the engine though is done by a second bigger motor which is attached to the rear of the transmission casing uh, which puts out 48 horsepower and is there to help the combustion power plant propel the car once it's underway. Both motors are powered by a tiny 1.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack located beneath the boot floor and the whole powertrain is mated to an auto gearbox of the race style clutchless dog variety that we just mentioned. The total system output here is rather different to Fernando Alonso's 850 horsepower race car of course but the whole setup proves in the clearest possible way that race tech really can be translated into sensible road car technology if you try hard enough with it. There's nothing really very racy about the way the Arcana drives though, uh, partly this is down to the weight issue we mentioned earlier on, but there's more to it than that. Uh, the gearbox doesn't help, its response a bit like you'd get from a belt driven CVT auto in that there's uh, something of a weird disconnect between the engine and what your right foot is actually doing. Uh, when you accelerate hard uh, there's a big rush of revs, the needle on the power meter ahead of you uh, waves about like a windmill but there's uh, very often not very much extra initial forward motion until all the uh, complicated technology sorts itself out. It certainly seems to be getting in the way of what ought to be uh, quite reasonable reserves of pulling power. Um, the petrol engine musters 144 newton meters of it while the electric motor generates 205 newton meters and the smaller high voltage starter generator uh, delivers an additional 50 newton meters. Playing with the various provided drive modes doesn't really help to make the whole experience feel any more rapid. Uh, to replicate this E-Tech hybrid model's rather modest claimed performance figures, uh, 10.8 seconds to 62 en route to 107 miles an hour, you would of course have to have selected the most dynamic of the three settings on offer, uh, that's Sport, but you're not going to want to do that too often uh, for fear of decimating the frugal fuel returns. Uh, they might have prompted you to choose this car in the first place after all. Uh, for that uh, you will most of the time want to stay instead in my sense, that's a hybrid mode which blends the petrol and electric motor output for maximum economy or possibly in the eco setting which uses a more measured mapping of the accelerator pedal and adapted gear changing for greater frugality. In town you might want to select EV which prioritizes battery electric drive up to about 27 miles an hour uh, providing there's sufficient charge of course. 
There's also a further brake setting on the gear lever, which uh, increases throttle lift-off, electrical regeneration, although not to the point where lifting your right foot uh, results in the kind of abrupt retardation you'd find in an EV. Uh, for moments when you might need a sudden burst of acceleration, which often isn't much of a burst uh, for reasons that I've already mentioned, uh, the throttle has a kickdown function and that brings all the power sources into play at the same time, suspending the EV mode should it have been selected. Rather less complexity is delivered by the TCE 140 mild hybrid model we mentioned earlier. Thanks in part to a 100 kilogram weight saving over the full hybrid version, the 0 to 62 miles an hour time of 9.8 seconds is a second faster, and there are no EV like limitations on top speed. So, on an autobahn, you would theoretically be able to reach 127 miles an hour flat out. But as with other mild hybrids, there's nothing really very sophisticated in play here, uh, not even the kind of 48 volt architecture that you'd find uh, in most other mild hybrid units. This one restricts itself to lesser 12 volt tech, but it works the way that these kinds of engines usually do with a mandatory auto gearbox, in this case with seven speeds, mated to an integrated starter generator, which soaks up energy which would otherwise be lost in cruising or braking. This is then deployed to power the engine stop-start system and to add an extra 20 newton meters of pulling power under acceleration. Whichever flavor of Arcani you decide on, you might want to make sure bumpier and urban roads feature in your test drive in it. Uh, this will allow you to pass your own judgment on the rather brittle ride quality that other reviewers have complained about with this car, uh, particularly on the larger 18-inch wheels which the plusher trim levels offer. It's certainly on the firmer side and there's no option of an adaptive damping system to improve things there, but we're not really minded to be too critical because frankly it's nothing that you couldn't live with and sharper obstacles like speed humps and potholes are actually absorbed pretty well. A modern multi-link rear suspension design, well that would obviously improve things, but you don't uh, get that here, you just get a straightforward McPherson strut arrangement at the front and a fairly simple beam axle at the back, which is disappointing given the coupe-like sporting vibe, as is the rather detached feeling you get through the steering, although it does allow you to place the car pretty accurately through the bends where you'll find body roll is reasonably well controlled. Predictably, this Renault is much more in its element on the highway, where you'll enjoy impressive refinement, especially in this E-Tech full hybrid variant. And cruising will be made even easier if you've gone for a top RS line model and you've paid extra for the advanced driving assistance package. Now that delivers a certain amount of the level two autonomous driving tech, which was uh, previously limited to larger cars. Here, combining the car's adaptive cruise control system with active lane centering and a traffic jam function, uh, this can temporarily allow this Renault to take over your driving duties, that's provided you keep your hands on the wheel at all times, uh, starting or stopping the car when tailbacks occur. But we think this technology works best in town, where it can take over when you're inching along in one of those you know, really annoying crawling traffic queues. There isn't much else you need to know. Uh, obviously, despite the crossover queues, this car is not intended for off-road use. The restricted ground clearance means that we'd even think twice about bumpier tracks, actually. You might be more disappointed to learn that it can't pull much along either. Uh, brake tone capacity is limited to just 760 kilos for this hybrid or 900 kilos for the mild hybrid model. But hey, who cares about that? Your Arcana will look great outside the gym. No one in your street will probably have one and you'll be tempted to admire yourself in plate glass windows as you drive through town. Who else needs more from a family sharabang than that? Answers on a postcard, please. For someone like Renault's chief stylist, Dutchman Lauren van den Acker, it must be nice, if perhaps a little daunting, to be asked to design something from scratch. The French brand says that the brief given to that designer and his team was to combine modern design details and a flowing silhouette with a purposeful SUV stance. And you might even feel that that brief has been met here. 
The Arcana may be a clean sheet design, but there's something very familiar about it when you're viewing it front on. Uh, the days when Renault was famed for unpredictable styling have, it seems, long gone. And so the Arcana features a bluff and wide version of the familiar Renault family face. Cues from the brand's other mainstream models, uh, the Clio, the Capture, the Megane, they reappear again here, most notably with these C-shaped daytime running lights which curve out from these uh, full LED headlamps with a stylistic flourish. Now, one writer reckoned that that reminded him of a fairground version of Salvador Dali's moustaches. Uh, there's certainly a degree of overtaking presence here. Uh, with the Arcana, though, all of this has been embellished with uh, quite a lot of extra detail. There's certainly an awful lot going on here. There are strakes across the roof. There are twin contours on both sides of the bonnet and further down there's a trim specific lower skid plate which is finished in gunmetal on this top RS line model in grey on the S edition version and in dark grey on the base iconic variants. With RS line spec you get this sportier look and that's courtesy of a studded shiny black honeycomb grille, gloss black door mirrors and a more dynamically styled front bumper with this arching full width upper blade. From the side, things are less fussy, and here's where the Arcana can't be confused with any other Renault model, and that's thanks to what the brand calls sleek, coupe-inspired styling with an athletic stance and sloping profile. It probably won't be mistaken for premium brand coupe SUV models in this segment, but what is obvious is just how much lengthier and lower the Arcana is than other cars in this class, not only compared to its Clio and Capture platform partners, but more relevantly to obvious rivals like the Toyota CHR and the Volkswagen Tiggo. This car is more than four and a half meters long, yet it's less than 1.6 meters high. Now to put this into perspective, uh, you're talking 340 millimeters longer than the taller and narrower Capture and 200 millimeters longer than the chunkier CHR. Most of that length extension is between the wheels, which of course are big, either 17 or 18 inches in size. We've We've got the 18 inch RS line Silverstone rims here. Arcana trim designations are advertised on this Fender Vent badge above the front wheel arch, while its mildly SUV like credentials are underlined by this color coded lower trim strip, which uh, draws attention to the crossover style lower sill cladding, which flows into these wheel arch extensions. Avoid base spec and you can add a colour contrast roof too and a striking Valencia orange paint finish with this RS line variant. It'll all make quite an impact down at the gym. From certain angles it can all look a little disjointed, from others surprisingly elegant, but the rear three-quarter view is perhaps where this car is most distinctive. While the side windows uh, pinch in towards the rear, the lower body retains its width and kicks up over the rear arches, and that creates quite a muscular look. At the rear there are family cues which work very well, wide tail lights narrowing into a shallow red lighting strip with the Renault badge at its centre and the model name below. Again, there are sportier embellishments if you've stretched up to this RS line level of trim. There's a different bumper, and there's a skid plate, plus twin exhaust pipes and a small lip spoiler, which uh, together change the car's appearance to a surprising degree. It's really well worth comparing the appearance of the various trim levels if you can. As usual though, uh, what's rather more important is what you can't see, namely that light, stiff CMF-B common module family B segment platform that we referred to earlier on, which features high elastic limit steel stretched here across a greatly increased wheelbase. Okay now, so let's uh, step through that long front door to see if the Akana's interior is as distinctive as the outside. Get yourself comfortable and it's all very new era Renault with a dash of extra sporting embellishment if you stretched up to this top RS line variant. It's certainly enough to make uh, rivals like the Toyota CHR and the Volkswagen Tiggo seem a little dull. Or at least it is, provided you've avoided base trim and therefore got this cabin all specked out with these uh, ambient lighting strips here, a larger central portrait style screen and this plush 
faux leather and fabric or suede style upholstery. The decor on the doors and on the mid-level part of the fascia, that is also trim specific. As you can see, we've got a carbon fiber effect finish here. And there are also some nice design touches like uh, these knurled ventilation dials. They sit below uh, smart piano style switches on the center stack. We like this portrait easy link central infotainment screen, which is seven inches in size with base iconic spec, but as here, 9.3 inches further up the range. As usual with these kinds of monitors, there's a choice of home screen formats, either a split screen, typically divided into nav, radio and phone sections, or a display with icons, uh, nav, radio, music, phone, apps, car info and settings. There's a lot of detail here, uh, particularly in the driving assistance and the multi-sense menus, and of course, you'll get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Uh, you can use this monitor to set various ambient lighting profiles. You can choose from white, blue, green, red, purple, sky blue, yellow and orange shades. And they change the color of the classy LED strips which feature across the fascia and the door cards. What you view through the grippy three-spoke wheel depends on the powertrain that you've chosen. TCE mild hybrid variants get a 4.2 inch screen that's flanked by physical gauges, but E-Tech hybrid models like this one get this seven inch customizable display that stretches across the entire binnacle with virtual dials and rather more engaging graphics. You can choose between various layouts. Uh, minimalistic comfort does away with dials and prioritizes a digital speedo. Uh, digits which is surrounded in the eco and regular formats with a power meter gauge and that gains red embellishment in the final sport format. This dial is flanked by virtual gauges for battery charge on the left and for fuel on the right. And using uh, steering wheel switches, you can tailor that information, uh, the information you're briefed with, at the top of the binnacle screen. Uh, the top left can show either an energy monitor, a temperature, a trip computer, an odometer, or various efficiency readouts, or the top right, uh, that can show radio, navigation, or compass information. Or if you're fed up with information overload, you can leave both sides blank. What else? Well, this car feels like it's from a slightly larger segment than most compact SUVs, at least in terms of leg space, if not shoulder room. Uh, visibility is very good all round, thanks to a reasonably deep window line and a slightly higher than expected driving position. And it's also further helped by the standard rear camera and the all-round parking sensors. The quality of materials here also feels uh, better than the class average, while build quality from the Busan factory, uh, which is the Renault Group's biggest production site in Asia, well, that generally matches the smarter ambiance. Now, true, you would be unlikely to mistake this for a uh, premium brand model, but the door handles and the paddle shifters feel substantial, and the steering wheel here feels nice to hold on the plusher versions where it's been covered in perforated leather. Now, this is nicely stitched, as are the door cards and the seats. Uh, the frameless rear view mirror there adds a finishing touch. As for cabin practicalities, well, it's a mixed bag here. Uh, this lidded box between the seats is small and it has no connectivity ports. An overhead sunglasses compartment, that's been forgotten. Uh, this inverted shallow tray next to the electronic handbrake switch for the card key, we'll see it rattling about as you drive. And as usual with French cars in right-hand drive form, uh, the glove box size is compromised by the fuse box. But on the plus side, uh, there are decently sized door bins, there are ticket clips and the sun visors, there are silver framed cup holders between the seats, and there's a stowage area at the bottom of the center stack with a 12 volt port, an aux in point, and two USB A points. Uh, avoid base trim, and there's a netted pocket in the passenger footwell too. Let's head to the back of the cabin now, where the Arcana's length should deliver some extra comfort for rear seat passengers. And that is pretty much what you get. Uh, there isn't a great deal of room to stretch out, but it is better than the rather cramped conditions which are served up by obvious rivals. In terms of legroom, it's more Ford Cougar or Peugeot 3008 than Ford Puma or Toyota CHR, and all the better for it. 
Uh, you're not going to want to be sat in the middle for long in any car in this segment. And this Arcana's small car platform means that shoulder room here isn't uh, particularly impressive. But the designers, they have at least restricted the height and size of this central transmission tunnel, above which you'll find twin vents, a 12-volt socket and a couple of useful USB-A ports. You might be hoping that the seat base here would slide like it does in Renault's Capture. Unfortunately not. It doesn't recline either, but headroom is at least decent. It's comfortably better than the CHR, for example, although this uh, sloping roof line means that the 862 millimetres of ceiling space on offer here inevitably falls short of what you get in a more conventional, squarer compact SUV of the Qashqai or Attica variety. Storage, well, that's so-so. The door bins are slim. It's a shame that iconic models don't get the net pockets in the backs of the front seats, but you do get coat hooks in the grab handles. And uh, if you avoid base trim, you get a central armrest with cup holders. Plus, there are also nice little touches like the uh, overhead individual reading lights and on this plusher model here, the blue splashes on the carpet mats and the lovely stitching on the door cards too. Let's finish with a look out back. Uh, the conventionally opening tailgate does without any standard or optional electrical embellishment and it opens to reveal a lengthy load space which you have to access over quite a high lip. There's 480 litres of capacity on offer in this full hybrid model. You'd have 513 litres if you went for the mild hybrid version. Uh, that doesn't have to package in, of course, such a large battery. Either way, the figures look pretty good compared with the 456 litres of the smaller Ford Puma and the rather stingy 377 litres of the Toyota CHR. Renault provides an adjustable height boot floor, but you can't use it because the underfloor jack and space saver spare wheel get in the way. Still, there's plenty of space around these items for small objects you might want to keep out of sight. A rather dim light is provided on the left, but Renault has forgotten a few practical touches here. Uh, you don't even get bag hooks or tie down points and a ski hatch uh, that's missing too which is annoying because you don't get a folding center section for the rear bench either so if you have rear seated passengers uh, longer items like skis will probably have to go on the roof Still, the saving grace here again is space. Retract the 60-40 split folding bench and you'll get a capacity of 1,263 litres with this E-Tech full hybrid or 1,296 with the TCE mild hybrid. To give you some class perspective, our Toyota CHR offers just 1,164 litres. Obviously, the lower roofline of the Arcana restricts capacity compared with a boxier SUV in this class, but what's available here should be more than sufficient for most owners who will be pleasantly surprised by the practicality on offer from this sporty-looking car. What might a car that looks like this cost you? Well, let's get to pricing, which at the time this test in autumn 2021 started at around £25,000 and reached up to around £31,000. Now, while the Arcana's position in the market is perhaps not immediately easy to grasp, the range on offer here is at least pretty straightforward. There's just this one body style, a choice of three trim levels, standard automatic transmission and two engine choices, both petrol powered and both delivering around 140 horsepower. So choose either the 1.3 litre TCE 140 mild hybrid with 12 volt assistance or the full fat 1.6 litre E-Tech hybrid 145 petrol electric model we're trying here. The Arcana range kicks off with the iconic trim level, it progresses to mid-range S edition and it's topped off by the sportier RS line version we're testing today. Uh, whichever trim level you choose, you'll probably be tempted to find the extra £1,000 the runner wants for the more efficient 1.6 litre full hybrid E-Tech powertrain. Don't bother asking for a diesel, but it does seem likely that the plug-in hybrid petrol powertrain that you can have in Renault's Capture will make an appearance in this car sometime in its production run if this coupe SUV is well received. 
A little more complex is the Arcana's position within the Renault lineup. Think in terms of this car being around £5,000, more expensive than the brand's most compact SUV, the Capture Crossover, which puts it about the same price as the French maker's mid-sized Kajar SUV. That model, though, is a more conventionally sized and proportioned SUV with a different powertrain lineup. So Renault thinks rightly that the two cars will appeal to customers with different priorities. With the Arcana effectively straddling two SUV size classes, the alternatives from other brands that you might consider will largely depend on your priorities. Uh, there is nothing else in the class which offers this runner's choice of mild hybrid and full hybrid powertrain options, but there are other choices you could make in this class with a similar coupe SUV design ethos. Perhaps the closest crossover class option in terms of sleek styling is the Toyota CHR, but that car only comes with a full hybrid engine and has a starting price around £1,800 more than an equivalent full hybrid Arcana, which means around £28,000 for a smaller Toyota. You might not be tempted by that or by the other coupe SUV style model that springs to mind in this class. Volkswagen's Tiger, which is also smaller, can't offer any electrified engines and broadly sells at around the same price as this Renault. We'd like to be able to recommend the appealing Cupra for Mentor as a compact coupe SUV alternative, but the cheapest auto version of one of those, the base TSI 150 DSG variant, costs around £30,000, so a chunk more than even this plushest Arcana. And again, there's no electrified tech on offer, not at least at that point in the Fermenter range anyway. Otherwise, you'll be looking at more conventional SUV crossovers as alternatives here. And they're really more accurately targeted either by the Renault Capture, which takes on cars in the Nissan Duke and Ford Puma class, or by Renault's larger Kajar, which contends with models like Nissan's Qashqai, uh, Ford's Cougar, Seat's Attica, Peugeot's 3008, the Mini Countryman, and many others. Should you find yourself stretching all the way up to around £31,000 for the top RS line E-Tech hybrid Arcana we're trying here, you might be tempted to think that for not a lot more, you could get a compact coupe SUV model with a premium badge, like say a BMW X2 or an Audi Q3 Sportback. But think again, the cheapest versions of those models cost from around £32,000, but you'd be paying vastly more than that if you wanted to match this Renault's spec. And if you did that, you'd be getting a smaller car without a similar level of electrified engine tech. Having considered all that, you might be starting to agree with us that this Arcana has carved out a nice little niche for itself, and your interest in this car might be sealed if you were to discover that Renault has been generous with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Now, even base iconic trim models get LED performance headlamps with C-shaped daytime running lights in LED, plus 17-inch diamond-cut alloy wheels, tinted rear windows, all-round parking sensors, and a reversing camera. There's cruise control with a speed limiter, there's keyless entry and auto lights and wipers. Inside there's automatic air conditioning and a 7 inch portrait central infotainment display with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and a six speaker Archimist DAB sound system. The instrument screen is 4.2 inches with the mild hybrid TCE version or 7 inches with the E-Tech hybrid. We can't really see why you'd opt for a car like this, prioritising style, and then hobble the end confection with a poverty level of trim. Uh, assuming that most the potential Arcana customers will agree with this perspective, we'd expect their starting point in the range uh, would be with mid-level S edition trim. The major upgrades here lie with the larger size of central infotainment screen. It grows to a far more satisfying 9.3 inches, plus the exterior gains 18-inch Pasadena wheels, and the cabin's lift quite a lot by the addition of colour customizable ambient lighting strips and upholstery in a combination of faux leather and cloth. Other embellishments at this level include leather for the steering wheel and for the gear lever, uh, chromed tailpipes, adaptive cruise control, an electric parking brake, uh, passenger seat height adjustment. There's also an auto dimming rear view mirror, a rear armrest, a storage net in the passenger footwell and some extra camera safety kit that we'll get onto in just a moment. 
If you can stretch up to a range topping RS line version like the model we're testing here, you'll get an altogether sportier look and feel. So there's unique front and rear styling, 18 inch Silverstone wheels and gloss black door mirrors. While inside the cabin's marked out by a carbon style dash and door trim with red highlights, uh, suede inserts on the double stitched sports seats, aluminium pedals, a stitched leather gear knob, a perforated stitched leather steering wheel and seat belts with red stripes. Easy Park Assist, which makes hands-free parking possible, is also standard on the RS line version, as are front seats with electrical adjustment and also heating, plus a wireless phone charger and a frameless rear view mirror. There aren't too many options, especially not with base iconic trim, where the only extras you can add are metallic paint and a spare wheel. The latter is an essential extra across the range. You have a few more choices with mid-range S edition level. There's a winter pack, which comprises heated front seats and steering wheel, a leather pack. Now that includes those items along with leather upholstery and electric front seats. And there's a parking pack, which gives you the hands-free parking system. This top are the rest line trim offers the option of a black contrast coloured roof and an open glass sunroof plus Renault's latest autonomous drive tech, uh, more on that in a second. Unless you want your Arcana and Glacier white, that's the only solid colour, you'll have to pay Renault Extra for one of the metallic or pearl shades. We've got metallic grey here. You'll need RS line trim if you want the brightest Valencia orange shade. Uh, your dealer can also guide you through a wide range of practical Renault accessories, including items like swan neck and retractable tow bars, boot liners, protective film, roof bars, bike racks, uh, roof boxes and practical items like phone holders and wireless charging mats. Safety is an area where Renault has traditionally been very strong and the Arcana appears to continue that trend. It hasn't been crash tested as a standalone model, but it has been awarded five stars by Euro NCAP. The organization gave it the same rating as the Renault Capture uh, because the two models share the same architecture and they're fitted with the same safety equipment. All versions of the Arcana have a pretty comprehensive suite of active safety features, as you'll discover from a glance of the driving assistance part of the central screen's settings menu. Here you can see the main camera safety items, active braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, lane departure warning with lane keep assist, active steering, uh, traffic sign recognition with speed alerts, a following distance indicator, and also fatigue detection, which will alert you to stop for a restorative coffee if the sensors determine from your reactions that you're getting drowsy. Avoid base iconic trim and you also get blind spot warning. Now that stops you from dangerously pulling out in front of another vehicle and also rear cross traffic alert which makes reversing out of a parking space safer by letting the driver know if another vehicle is approaching from the left or right. All the safety basics, of course, feature across the range too, which means the usual ABS braking, stability control and tyre pressure monitoring systems, along with hill start assist to prevent the car rolling back as you pull away on a slope. Should the worst happen, there's e-call, which will alert rescue services with your exact GPS location if the airbags go off. There are twin front side and curtain airbags, but there's no knee bag for the driver. And of course, there are ice fixed charge seat points with higher standard eye size compatibility on the passenger front seat and the outer rear seats. Finally, we mentioned the mild level of optional autonomous drive tech earlier. It's contained within Renault's Easy Drive package, which is available only on RS line versions. This adds a degree of drive autonomy by embellishing the adaptive cruise control system with automatic lane centering and a traffic jam function. That's useful because uh, in heavier traffic, it automatically brings you to a halt and gets you going again. The word hybrid is used so much around the marketing of this car that you could be forgiven for expecting running cost returns that are rather better than those that are actually delivered. 
well than those delivered by the mild hybrid TCE 140 model anyway, which offers up unremarkable WLTP rated stats of 49.6 miles per gun on the combined cycle and 130 grams per kilometer of CO2. To give you some perspective, when we tested the same TCE engine in non-mild hybrid form in Renault similarly sized Kajar SUV, the stats were about 10% worse. So the 12 volt mild hybrid system with its integrated starter generator is obviously doing something, but uh, you can keep the Prius comparisons on hold for the time being. Or you can save them for comparisons with the E-Tech 1.6 litre full hybrid model we're trying today. It's just as well that the electrified elements of the E-Tech powertrain are so sophisticated uh, because the combustion engine that all of that is mated to isn't. It's a relatively old-fashioned Nissan MPI unit, which is used in models that the Nissan Renault Alliance sells in less advanced Russian and South American markets, and it uh, doesn't feature any kind of turbocharger. Still, when it's mated to all the hybrid tech that we detail for you earlier on, in our driving experience section, it can certainly deliver some really eye-catching efficiency stats. Now true, the key figures here are some way off what you might expect for the pricier plug-in hybrid powertrain that this car might get later in its production life, but Renault reckons, and we concur, that the stats for this self-charging hybrid derivative are more real-world realistic than a PHEV model's claimed readings would probably be. The WLTP figure for combined cycle fuel economy is 58.9 mpg, and we reckon around 45 to 50 mpg should be regularly achievable without too much trouble. The WLTP CO2 reading is 108 grams per kilometre. Renault claims that the E-Tech powertrain is 40% more economical than a conventional combustion engine, and whether you agree with that or not, this model's benefit-in-kind taxation rating improvement, 25% uh, down from 30% with the mild hybrid, is certainly eye-catching. Arguably more relevant is the question of how this Arcana hybrids figures stack up against its most obvious uh, direct full hybrid coupe SUV style segment rival, Toyota CHR. On the same WLTP combined cycle, the Toyota will travel between half a mile and a mile less on a gallon and emit one more gram of CO2 per kilometre. Its BIK rating is also almost identical at 24 to 25%, depending on version. While the Arcana with the E-Tech hybrid system will always start in electric mode, you shouldn't expect too much in the way of electric-only range if you press the physical EV button just below the infotainment screen uh, because the relatively small battery gets depleted quickly and it can only be charged by regenerative braking. In normal non-EV driving, uh, the experience is still what you might call, well, classic hybrid, uh, where the petrol engine usually joins the party smoothly, we must say, uh, when you get somewhere around jogging pace. Now, if you've traveled in a non-plug-in Prius, or indeed in the Toyota CHR, you'll know exactly what to expect. For best efficiency results, you'll obviously need to be frequently using the most frugal of the three drive modes on offer, Eco, which uh, slightly muffles the throttle and climate control system's output. And you'll also need to keep a close eye on the instrument cluster's power meter, keeping the digital needle in the uh, initial most economic segment. In the top left-hand part of that screen, you can select an energy monitor display, and that shows what's being powered by what, or an Eco drive meter although all that really does is to tell you whether your foot is on the accelerator or not. Uh, the alternative average MPG readout might be slightly more useful. At least there are no annoying eco tips though. If you're looking to maximize charge in the battery, knocking down the gear lever to its lowest point enables you to select B mode, which increases the amount of energy that's recuperated when the car brakes. Uh, it is also useful, particularly at speed on country roads, for uh, slowing the car without using the brakes. With the mild hybrid powertrain, there's less assistance available, although Renault says that the stop-start function kicks in quicker than before, and there's a so-called sailing stop function where the car will coast during deceleration to reduce emissions. What other cost factors might you need to know about? Uh, well, vehicle excise duty is reasonable, £170 for E-Tech hybrid power bottles in year one, and £145 each year thereafter. 
For TCE 140 mild hybrid versions, you'll pay a bit more, £220 in the first year and £155 per year thereafter. Renault has made efforts in recent years to improve the residual values of its cars and industry experts expect the Arcana, helped perhaps by it being a little off mainstream, to retain up to 54% of its value after three years and a typical 36,000 miles of use. Uh, that's pretty impressive, although it's not quite as good as the Toyota CHR. Servicing intervals are as per the capture, so minor services every 12 months or 18,000 miles, followed by a more in-depth service every 12 months or 18,000 miles after a minor service. The brand offers an easy life service plan and that covers a car for up to four years and 40,000 miles. That can be paid for monthly and that helps to spread the servicing costs. The Arcana comes with Renault's five-year, 100,000-mile warranty, which includes unlimited mileage cover for the first 24 months. And now that compares well with the majority of other brands. Uh, they typically provide cover for three years and 60,000 miles for the whole vehicle. Uh, we should add that the battery of the Arcana E-Tech full hybrid model is covered for up to eight years and 100,000 miles. That's about half the course. In terms of insurance, uh, Arcanas with a more basic TCE 140 mild hybrid powertrain come in at groups 18E to 19E, depending on trim. Uh, those with the more advanced but lower performance E-Tech full hybrid powertrain start four insurance groups lower at group 14E, but they ramp right up to group 20E for the RS line version that we're trying here. How you view the Renault Arcana will depend largely on your priorities. If performance and driving involvement are at or near the top of your list, you might find yourself a bit underwhelmed by its limited dynamic abilities, especially in light of the sporty styling. If, though, you're merely looking for a distinctive and reasonably practical compact SUV, which is a bit larger than the class norm and provides plenty of equipment for the money, then there's plenty to like. Not least the way that this car stands out from the crowd. Not everything works stylistically here, but this car still manages to offer a level of pavement presence which will appeal in this segment. It's also safe, it's well connected, and it's relatively affordable. In short, in many ways, it rather punches above its weight. While the 1.6-litre full-fat E-Tech hybrid version we've been trying today sometimes feels a bit more complex than is strictly necessary, its higher level of efficiency makes it worth the small price premium over its less sophisticated 1.3-litre TCE 140 mild hybrid showroom stablemate. And the more relaxed nature of this full hybrid model also works better with the other strengths of the Arcana, particularly its spacious and well-equipped cabin. Either way, you're certainly going to want to stretch to one of the plusher trim levels, ideally this well-equipped RS line variant. Now yes, to some extent this Renault falls between two segments, those of compact and mid-sized coupe SUVs, but it's more distinctive than the closest rivals you could pitch against it, models like the Toyota CHR and the Volkswagen Tiggo. Yet it costs no more and it easily beats both for practicality, style and substance. Well, if you like the way the Arcana looks, you may well think that's delivered here.